Okay. Hi everyone, Sorry. my name is Elizabeth. I am a senior here in the Harrison Theater Department and I am so excited to be joining you all to read Wonder today. Now before we begin, make sure you all take out your Wonder Journals and if you happen to have forgotten your Wonder Journal, you can use a piece of paper. Thank you so much, we are so excited for this opportunity. Camp Lies. My parents got divorced the summer before ninth grade. My father was with someone else right away. In fact, though my mother never said so, I think this was the reason they got divorced. After the divorce, I hardly ever saw my father, and mother acted stranger than ever. It's not that she was unstable or anything, just distant, remote. My mother is the kind of person who has a happy face for the rest of the world, but not a lot left over for me. She's never talked to me much, not about her feelings, her life. I don't know much about what she was like when she was my age. Don't know much about the things she liked or didn't like. A few times she mentioned her own parents, who I've never met. It was mostly about how she wanted to get as far away from them as she could once she'd grown up. She never told me why. I asked a few times, but she would pretend she hadn't heard me. I didn't want to go to camp that summer. I wanted to stay with her to help her through the divorce, but she insisted I go away. I figured she wanted the alone time, so I gave it to her. Camp was awful. I hated it. I thought it would be better being a junior counselor, but it wasn't. No one I knew from the previous year had come back, so I didn't know anyone, not a single person. I'm not even sure why, but I started playing this little make-believe game with the girls in the camp. It asked me about stuff, about myself, and I'd make things up. My parents are in Europe, I told them. I live in a huge townhouse on the nicest street in North River Heights. I have a dog named Daisy. Then one day, I blurted out that I had a little brother who was deformed. I have absolutely no idea why I said this. It just seemed like an interesting thing to say. And of course, the reaction I got from the little girls in the bungalow was dramatic. Really? So sorry, that must be tough, et cetera, et cetera. I regretted saying this the moment it escaped from my lips, of course. I felt like such a fake. If Via ever found out, I thought, she'd think I was a weirdo. And I felt like a weirdo. But I have to admit, there was a part of me that felt a little entitled to this lie. I've known Augie since I was six years old. I've watched him grow up, I've played with him, I've watched all six episodes of Star Wars for his sake, so I could talk to him about the aliens and bounty hunters and all that. I'm the one who gave him the astronaut helmet he wouldn't take off for two years. I mean, I've kind of earned the right to think of him as my brother. And the strangest thing is that these lies I told, these fictions, did wonders for my popularity. The other junior counselors heard it from the campers, and they were all over it. Never in my life have I ever been considered one of the popular girls in anything, but that summer in camp, for whatever reason, I was the girl everybody wanted to hang out with. Even the girls in Bungalow 32 were totally into me. These were the girls at the top of the food chain. They said they liked my hair, though they changed it. They said they liked the way I did my makeup, though they changed that too. They showed me how to turn my t-shirts into halter tops. We smoked, we snuck out late at night and took the path through the woods to the boys camp. We hung out with boys. When I got home from camp, I called Ella right away to make plans with her. I don't know why I didn't call Via. I guess I just didn't feel like talking about stuff with her. She would have asked me about my parents, about Pam. Ella never really asked me about things. She was an easier friend to have in that way. She wasn't serious like Via. She was fun. She thought it was cool when I dyed my hair pink. She wanted to hear all about those trips through the woods late at night. be at school this year, and when I did, it was awkward. It felt like she was judging me. I knew she didn't like my new look. I knew she didn't like my group of friends. I didn't much like hers. We never actually argued. We just drifted away. And I badmouthed her to each other. She's such a prude. She's so this. She's so that. We knew we were being mean but it was easier to ice her out if we pretended she had done something to us. 
The truth is, she hadn't changed at all. We had. We'd become those other, these other people, and she was still the person she'd always been. That annoyed me so much, and I didn't know why. Once in a while, I'd look to see where she was sitting in the lunchroom, or check the elective list to see what she'd signed up for. But except for a few nods in the hallway and occasional, hello, we never really spoke to each other. I noticed Justin about halfway through the school year. I hadn't noticed him at all before then, other than that he was this skinny, cutish dude with thick glasses and longest hair who carried a violin everywhere. Then one day, I saw him in front of the school with his arm around Via. So Via has a boyfriend, I said to Ella, kind of mocking. I don't know why it surprised me that she'd have a boyfriend. Out of the three of us, she was totally the prettiest. Blue, blue eyes and a long, wavy, dark hair. But she just acted like she was not she was at all interested in boys. She acted like she was too smart for that kind of stuff. I had a boyfriend too, a guy named Zach. When I told him I was choosing the theater elective, he shook his head and said, Careful you don't turn into a drama geek. Not the most sympathetic dude in the world, but very cute, very high on the totem pole, a varsity jock. I wasn't planning on taking theater at first. Then I saw Via's name on the sign-up sheet and just wrote my name down on the list. I don't even know why. We managed to avoid one another throughout most of the semester, like we didn't even know each other. Then one day, I got to theater class a little early, and Davenport asked me to run off additional copies of the play he was planning on having us do for the spring production, The Elephant Man. I heard about it, but I didn't really know what it was about, so I started skimming through the pages while I was waiting for the Xerox machine. It was about a man who lived more than a hundred years ago named John Merritt, who was terribly deformed. We can't do this play, Mr. D, I told him when I got back to the class. And I told him why. My little brother has a birth defect and has a deformed face, and this play would hit a little too close to home. He seemed annoyed and a little unsympathetic. But I kind of said that my parents would have a real issue with the school doing this play. So anyway, he ended up switching to our town. I think I went for the role of Emily Gibbons, Gibbs because I knew Via was going to go for it too. It never occurred to me that I'd beat her for the role. What I miss most. One of the things I miss the most about Via's friendship is her family. I loved her mom and dad. They were always so welcoming and nice to me. I knew they loved their kids more than anything. I always felt safe around them, safer than anywhere else in the world. How pathetic that I felt safer in someone else's house than in my own, right? And, of course, I loved Augie. I was never afraid of him, even when I was little. I had friends that couldn't believe I'd ever go to be his house. His face creeps me out, they'd say. You're stupid, I'd tell them. Augie's face isn't so bad once you get used to it. I called Via's house once just to say hello to Augie. Maybe part of me was hoping Via would answer. I don't know. Hey, Major Tom, I said, using my nickname for him. Miranda! He sounded so happy to hear my voice. It actually kind of took me by surprise. I'm going to a regular school now, he told me excitedly. Really? Wow. I said, totally shocked. I guess I never thought he'd go to a regular school. His parents have always been so protective of him. I guess I thought he'd always be that little kid in the astronaut helmet I gave him. Talking to him, I could tell he had no idea that me and Via and I weren't close anymore. It's different in high school, I explained to him. You end up hanging out with loads of different people. I have some new friends in my new school, he told me. A kid named Jack and a girl named Summer. That's awesome, Augie, I said. Well, I was just calling to tell you I miss you and hope you're having a good year. Feel free to call me whenever you want, okay, Augie? You know I always love you. I love you too, Miranda. <laughs> Say hi to Via for me. Tell her I miss her. I will. Bye. Bye.
Neither my mother nor my father could come see the play on opening night. My mother, because she had this thing at work, and my dad, because his new wife was going to have her baby any second now, and he had to be on call. Zach couldn't come to opening night either. He had a volleyball game against Collegiate he couldn't miss. In fact, he wanted me to miss the opening night so I could come to your mom. My friends all went to the game, of course, because all their boyfriends were playing. Even Ella didn't come. Given a choice, she chose the crowd. So on opening night, no one that was remotely close to me was even there. And the thing is, I realized in my third or fourth rehearsal that I was good at this acting thing. I felt the part. I understood the words I spoke. I could read the lines as if they were coming from my brain and my heart. And on opening night, I can honestly say I knew I was going to be more than good. I was going to be great. I was going to be extraordinary, but there would be no one there to see it. We were all backstage, nervously running through our lines in our heads. I peeked through the curtain at the people taking their seats in the auditorium. That's when I saw Augie walking down the aisle with Isabel and Nate. They took three seats in the fifth row near, near the middle. Augie was wearing a bow tie, looking around excitedly. He had grown up a bit since I'd last seen him, almost a year ago. His hair was shorter, and he was wearing some kind of hearing aid now. His face hadn't changed a bit. Davenport was running through some last-minute scene, last-minute changes with the set decorator. I saw Justin pacing off stage left, mumbling his lines nervously. Mr. Davenport, I said, surprising myself as I spoke. I'm sorry, but I can't go on tonight. Davenport turned around slowly. What? He said. Are you kidding? I'm just, I muttered, looking down. I don't feel well. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm going to throw up. This was a lie. It's just last minute jitters. No, I can't do it. I'm telling you. Davenport looked furious. Rena, this is outrageous. I'm sorry. Davenport took a deep breath like he was trying to res restrain himself. To be truthful, I thought he looked like he was going to explode. Explode? Take out your wonder journals and draw what you think Mr. Davenport looks like. You have 90 seconds to draw. His forehead turned bright pink. Miranda, this is absolutely unacceptable. Now go take a few deep breaths and- I'm not going on, I said loudly, and the tears came to my eyes fairly easily. Fine. He screamed, not looking at me. Then he turned to a kid named David, who was a set decorator. Go find Olivia in the lighting booth. Tell her she's filling in for Miranda tonight. What? Said David, who wasn't too swift. Go! Shouted Davenport in his face. Now! The other kids had caught on to what was happening and gathered around. What's going on? Said Justin. Last minute change of plans. Said Davenport. Miranda doesn't feel well. I feel sick, I said, trying to sound sick. So why are you still here? Davenport said to me angrily. Stop talking, take off your costume, and give it to Olivia, okay? Come on, everybody, let's go, go, go. I ran backstage to the dressing room as quickly as I could, and I started peeling off my costume. <laughs> Two seconds later, there was a knock, and Via half opened the door. What is going on? She said. Hurry up, put it on, I answered, handling through the dress. You're sick? Yeah, hurry up. Via looked stunned, took off her t-shirt and jeans, and pulled the long dress over her head. I pulled it down for her and then zipped up the back. Luckily,
lovely Emily Webb didn't go on till 10 minutes into the place, so the girl handling hair and makeup had time to put Via's hair up in a twist and do a quick makeup job. I'd never seen Via with a lot of makeup on. She looked like a model. I'm not even sure I'll remember my lines, Via said, looking at herself in the mirror. Your lines. You'll do great, I said. She looked at me in the mirror. Why are you doing this, Miranda? Olivia. It was Davenport, hush shouting from the door. You are on in two minutes. It's now or never. Via followed him out the door, so I never got the chance to answer her question. I don't know what I would have said anyway. I wasn't sure what the answer was. The performance. I watched the rest of the play from the wings just off stage, next to Davenport. Justin was amazing, and Via, in that heartbreaking last scene, was awesome. There was one line she flubbed a bit, but Justin covered for her, and no one in the audience even noticed. I heard Davenport muttering under his breath, Good, good, good. He was more nervous than all of the students put together. The actors, the set decorators, the lighting team, the guy handling the curtains. Davenport was a wreck, frankly. The only time I felt any regret if you could even call it that, was at the end of the play when everyone went out for their curtain calls. Via and Justin were the last of the actors walking out on stage, and the audience rose to their feet when they took their bows. That, I admit, was a little bittersweet for me. But just a few minutes later, I saw Nate and Isabel and Augie make their way backstage, and they all seemed so happy. Everyone was congratulating the actors, patting them on the back, it was that crazy backstage theater mayhem where sweaty actors stand euphoric while people come worship them for a few seconds. In that crush of people, I noticed Augie kind of looking lost. I cut through the crowd as fast as I could and I came up behind him. Hey, I said, Major Tom! After the show, I can't say why I was so happy to see August again after so long, or how good it felt when he hugged me. I can't believe how big you've gotten, I said to him. I thought you were going to be in the play, he said. I wasn't up to it, I said. But Via was great, don't you think? He nodded. Two seconds later, Isabel found us. Miranda, she said happily, giving me a kiss on the cheek. And then to August. Don't ever disappear again. You're the one who disappeared, Augie answered back. How are you feeling? Isabel said to me. Via told us you got sick. Much better, I answered. Is your mom here? Said Isabel. No, she had to, she had work stuff, so it's actually not a big deal for me, I said truthfully. We have two more shows anyway, though I don't think I'll be as good as, as good an Emily as Via was tonight. Nate came over and we had basically the same exact conversation. Then Isabel said, Look, we're going to have a late night dinner to celebrate the show. Are you feeling up to joining us? We'd love to have you. Oh, no, I started to say. Please, said Augie. I should go home, I said. We insist, said Nate. By now, Via and Justin had come over with Justin's mom, and Via put her arm around me. You're definitely coming, she said, smiling her old smile at me. They started leading me out of the crowd, and I have to admit, for the first time in a very, very long time, I felt absolutely happy. Thank you all so much for joining us today for this reading of Wonder. We absolutely loved being here with you, and we are the Harrison Theater Senior Department. Bye! Bye.